the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook over. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is for linear algebra students who are now entering into a topic called eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And this video is just going to be a gentle introduction to both of those topics. And as I state right here, we now turn our attention to exceptional vectors whose action on a given matrix results in something spectacularly simple. What is an eigenvalue and what is an eigenvector? Well, an eigenvector of an n by n matrix is a non-zero vector x such that the matrix times that vector x is a constant times that vector x. Now remember, a matrix times a vector is actually a vector itself. So that ax right there is just some vector, but an eigenvector for a matrix is a very special kind of vector. What happens when you multiply a matrix by one of its eigenvectors is the resulting vector from that product is just going to be a scalar multiple of the original eigenvector. So a times x could be five times x or negative four times x or something like that. And you can probably see exactly why we say these are very special vectors because what they do is they scale themselves. You have some matrix A that you multiply against a very special vector. The result is a scaled version of the original vector. Now, as is the case with most of mathematics, we like to put definitions on a lot of things that get talked about over and over again. Why not? I'd rather not look at the thing I sit on and say, hey, does anybody else want to sit on things you want to sit on? Instead, I'd like to say, hey, does anybody else want to sit on chairs? Right? So we really like to define things because it makes sense. A couple things I want to mention before I continue with the definition. The eigenvector only exists for an n by n matrix, a square matrix. I'm not telling you that matrix has to be invertible. I'm just telling you that it has to be square. Also, it's critical to note the eigenvector is non-zero. That's very important. There is no such thing as a zero vector eigenvector. So while we're at it and we're defining things here, I'd really like to define what that lambda is. That's the Greek lowercase letter lambda. And it's very traditional in mathematics to use that lambda when you talk about the associated scalar that gets popped out when you multiply A times that eigenvector. That scalar is something you call the eigenvalue. So just rereading the definition very quickly, an eigenvector of a square matrix is a non-zero vector such that A times that vector is some scalar times that vector, and that scalar is called an eigenvalue of A. And if I'm actually going to read this sentence properly, I would say a scalar lambda is called an eigenvalue of A if there is a non-trivial solution x of that equation. Basically, that's a fancy way of saying, hey, if I got a vector that multiplies against my matrix and the result is a scaled version of that original vector, that vector is going to be called an eigenvector and that scaling factor is going to be called the eigenvalue associated with that eigenvector. And as you can see, we often state that x is an eigenvector corresponding to that eigenvalue lambda. There's a lot of language that you kind of have to get used to when you start this conversation about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Believe it or not, these are incredibly important as you move forward, at least in linear algebra and differential equations. Before I leave this page, I just want to make sure that you're with me 100%. If a matrix times a vector ends up being a scalar multiple of that vector, then the vector itself is called the eigenvector or an eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue lambda. And it's very rare, if ever, that we've seen this up to this point in linear algebra. So this should feel like a first time topic. 
Now, if you watch my videos, generally I hop into some theorems right after a definition, something like that, but I'd rather actually just tackle a, an example here because honestly, eigenvectors, eigenvalues are best learned through examples. So is the vector negative two, negative three, two, an eigenvector for this matrix right here? I'm not gonna look at the rest of the question. I just wanna read this. If this vector, which I'll just call X, if that vector X is an eigenvector for the matrix A, then it should be the case that when I multiply A against that vector, it will just become a scalar multiple of the original vector X. Well, let's see if that's the case. You get to this point right here and you say, well, no, sure doesn't look like it because the result is an X. But guess what? That's not what the result should be if it's an eigenvector. It should be a multiple of the original X. Well, let's see if this is actually a multiple of the original vector, which is negative two, negative three, two. And the answer is undoubtedly yes. AX is equal to three X. So X is an eigenvector and the associated eigenvalue for that eigenvector is three. And by the way, that's actually what the second part of this question is asking. If so, if it is the case that that vector X is an eigenvector of that matrix A, what's the corresponding eigenvalue? So here's how I would write it. X, which is equal to negative two, negative three, two, is an eigenvector. We usually just write EVEC of the matrix A with corresponding eigenvalue, which again, we just usually write eval, lambda equals three. If I just said that to you without telling you what the matrix A is, at least you would know, oh, A times that vector X is just three times that vector X. Perfect. Now the last part of this question is asking, what about this vector right here? Negative one, negative six, 13. Is that an eigenvector for the matrix A? Well. Let's find out. And I'll call this vector V. And looky here, you may say, wait, no, that's not a multiple of the original vector V, but it actually is. It is zero times the original vector V. So V is an eigenvector. Remember, eigenvectors have to be non-zero, but I never said anything about eigenvalues, did I? So eigenvectors are allowed to be non-zero or they're forced to be non-zero, but eigenvalues could actually be zero. And we are going to have many eigenvectors and eigenvalues for matrices as we move forward. So sometimes it's nice to have a naming convention so that we're not always saying lambda is this and then lambda is something else. So what I tend to do is if I have a named vector like X, I'll say this is lambda sub x, and the other vector was v, and so I will call my corresponding eigenvalue for that lambda sub v. Just to let you know, that naming convention will change as we move forward, but for right now, it's easy to see why I would call those lambda sub x and lambda sub v. It's just to distinguish them from each other and also simultaneously to state what vector they're associated with. Now, I already stated this in that previous example, but it bears repeating. While an eigenvector is a non-zero vector, its associated eigenvalue can actually be zero, and we've just seen that. As a final example, and yes, I did say a final example in this video, let's go ahead and talk about a tactic to find an associated eigenvector to a given eigenvalue. Again, this video is just about an introduction to eigenvectors and eigenvalues. I didn't actually give you a theorem here or anything like that, just a straight definition. What is an eigenvector and its associated eigenvalue? And we've been able to do work with them even though we don't have theorems telling us anything about them right now. But somebody comes in the room and they say, I have an eigenvalue for this matrix right here. That eigenvalue is lambda equals negative four. And they say, I need you to find the associated eigenvector. Now, to be honest with you, there's going to be a better way than what we're doing now to find this eigenvector. But I just want us to see how we would organically 
find the associated eigenvector for this eigenvalue. So we have this matrix A, and we're gonna multiply it against some unknown eigenvector to result in negative four times that unknown eigenvector. If X is the eigenvector and negative four is its eigenvalue, this should be true by definition. The trick, and it's not much of a trick, it's actually just arithmetic, but the trick we're gonna use here is add four X to both sides. So I have a vector plus another vector equaling the zero vector. The other thing I'm going to do is really weird. I'm going to factor an X off the right hand side of both the matrix A and the number four. When I do this, something odd will occur. If you're astute, you should note this addition is ill-defined. That's a matrix, an N by N matrix, plus a scalar. That is an ill-defined addition. However, we do know that the vector X by itself is the same thing as the identity matrix, the N by N identity matrix times X. And so if I view that vector as the identity matrix times X, then when I factor X off, I have this. And now I can see I do have a square matrix A plus four times another square matrix, the identity matrix, but still the square matrix. And we have some type of matrix here, which is a sum of those two times X equaling zero. And remember X, if it's an eigenvector, cannot be zero. So I need to find the non-trivial solution to this homogeneous equation. Well, we've been solving homogeneous equations for quite some time, so this should not seem like rocket science to you. All we're gonna do is take that matrix A and we're gonna add to it the identity matrix being multiplied by four. Let me just show you what that looks like. So essentially all we're gonna do is just add fours to the main diagonal of our matrix A. It's actually a pretty nice arithmetic problem. And again, X is not supposed to be zero. It's an eigenvector, so it cannot be the zero vector. So what we need to do is find the non-trivial solution or maybe the base for the null space of A here. And by the way, this is not really A, this is a modified version of A. So let's call this matrix B and just say we need to find a basis for the null space of B. All right, we arrive here. We can see we do have a free variable, it's x sub three. So therefore the solution set to the homogeneous equation is the set of all vectors of the form some number times negative one to one. That negative one to one, I will go ahead and say that's the eigenvector. You can actually take any multiple of that because x sub three is a free variable, but it's pretty typical that most people just let that parameter equal one. Unless you have fractions in there, then you'll probably wanna make it a number that will kill off all fractions within your vector. So going back to the original question, an eigenvalue for this matrix is lambda equals negative four. Find the associated eigenvector. We started with, well then A times an eigenvector must be negative four, the eigenvalue, times the eigenvector X, added four X to both sides, rewrote X as the identity matrix times X so that when we factored X off, we'd have the identity matrix right here. So we had a proper matrix addition. And then we solved that homogeneous equation and arrived at the vector negative one to one as the eigenvector. You can actually quickly double check that this is true by taking this eigenvector and multiplying it by A just visually here, you get down to that, but if you factor a negative four out of that vector, you get your original eigenvector back. So the eigenvector is negative one to one with eigenvalue negative four. Now I did just mention a moment ago that we could have let the weight or the parameter on this be any other number we wanted. 
That will actually be one of our first theorems that we learn in the next video. For now, we've done enough of an introduction to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I hope this helps you in your linear algebra course, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Be a kind human being. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way cause. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't kosher. You may really hurt inside. It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry.